I tried everything I could think of to make this tank thrive. From changing fertilizers to fine-tuning the lighting, but none of that made a dent in the everlasting issue with algae and declining plant health. But little did I know that the issue had deeper roots. Yes, that pun was intentional, as the issue lies in a place where many people may overlook. The substrate. If you notice that the top growth of some of your plants is always healthy, but the bottom portions are melting or getting infested with algae, you might suspect a nutrient deficiency such as nitrogen. However, this can also indicate an issue with the substrate. Sometimes, it can be hard to spot since plants may be blocking your view. One way to confirm this is by trying to uproot the plants with as little force as possible. If the plants are easily uprooted, you either did not plant deep enough or have a substrate problem. Seeing blackened roots or mushy bottom stems is also an indicator. Additionally, if you you start to see cyanobacteria or this brown stuff developing in the substrate but not on plants and equipment, this indicates that the substrate has gone anaerobic, meaning it's deprived of oxygen. Now, there's a lot of debate on whether anaerobic substrate is a good or bad thing, as anaerobic bacteria can produce carbon dioxide and is where iron is in its Fe plus 2 state, which is easier for plants to uptake, but they can also produce H2S. Now, most soils will eventually become anoxic, depending on its depth. The only way to combat this is with oxygen. Fortunately, plant roots can oxygenate the substrate, but that also depends on how strong their root systems can grow. Small or delicate plants may not have intense root systems compared to, say, cryptocarini plants. This can result in anaerobic bacteria overrunning those areas. This is probably my main issue with my current 12-gallon tank. If you've been following my videos, I've mentioned a couple times that I believe nutrient deficiencies was the main problem. While that's part Partially true as switching to an EI-based fertilizer boosted the plants, but I'm still seeing poor growth in some areas, especially around the bottom portions of stems or in areas that may contain anaerobic bacteria. Another indicator that the soil was depleted was that the pH was around 7.4. Aqua soil has a buffering agent in it that buffers the water to a pH around 6.4, but the buffering agent will get depleted over time. So what do we do about this? Restart the tank? Hell no! Uh, well, you can. But that's a lot of work. Instead, we'll do even more work by removing any weak plants. Ideally, we can completely uproot an entire section of plants and then start cleaning up the substrate as much as possible. Afterwards, we will need to add fresh aqua soil to the area. You can remove any old aqua soil if you like and then start replanting. When you do start to replant, only pick the most healthiest plants. This may also mean you have to trim the tops, plant those, and discard the bottoms. Also, take a look at the health of the stems and roots. The stems should not be skinnier than the norm, nor should they be mushy, while the roots should be white without any black or browning to them. Furthermore, I would also discard any stems that have been trimmed and are growing side shoots. Obviously, you should trim and plant those side shoots, if they are large enough. Now, you probably have a few questions on your mind, such as why not just restart the tank, or wouldn't adding new aqua soil release ammonia, or even question as to why we would remove detritus as it can be used as nutrients for the plants? Well, uh, first of all, restarting a tank with fresh aqua soil will release more ammonia into the water compared to a targeted area. The tank will also have to undergo cycling again as a part from a mini cycle. Although, depending on your filter, it may be capable enough to handle it, so you might not have to wait as long. Furthermore, the issue could also just be in a single area, usually with background stems or area with less plant mass. Of course, if you do plan to rescape, then it ultimately doesn't matter. As for the detritus, while it's true that it can provide nutrients to plants, it's clearly not enough despite using liquid first and root tabs. Plus, the quantity of detritus was so large that it started to suffocate the roots. This is why it's important to clean the substrate every now and then, especially if you plan to grow more delicate plants. It is also the reason as to why I eventually fail to keep HC Cuba growing long term. Once you're done, it's now the waiting game. It may take up to two weeks for the plants to show any meaningful growth, but the work really pays off.
The tank may have been looking great before, but now it's on a whole new level. And now you know what it takes to take yours higher as well. And knowing is half the battle. The other half is from watching this video here.